Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bleed the brakes or drain the brake fluid out of the system so we don't spill fluid all over the garage. I'm going to move, this is the ABS sensor, and I'm just going to remove this from the clip here to get this out of the way. And we're going to get access to the protective cap here that goes over this is the, the bleeding port. And we're going to go ahead. We've got our 11 millimeter wrench here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place that over the fitting. That's going to be the happy place for it while we're doing the ble bleeding of the system. And we're going to take the 3 8 inch hose. I'm going to put it onto the fitting here and put the tube into a jar that will hold enough of the brake fluid. And we're going to release or open the fitting here and this will allow the brake fluid to leave the system. the brake hose we can get the fluid to start to move down the system. I'm also going to loosen the reservoir cap One thing you don't want to get is brake fluid all over your paint job. There's the master cylinder where the reservoir is empty and we don't have any brake fluid in the top half because we're going to be replacing, this is the line that we're replacing today. It's the top of two lines. Um, you can see where this is, we've got an extension on the bike here. Uh, bring the handlebars a little bit closer to the rider. And the brake line here is just being a little bit, it's under too much pressure. It, it, it needs a little bit longer length here to make it uh, safe and, and not to wear on the hose. So that's what we're doing today is we're replacing this line right here. In our kit, we have propaganda. And we have some diagrams, instructions. We have the hose itself. And we have some crush washers here that'll go on either side of the fittings. And the blue blocks and this gray piece here are for twisting the positions of the hose ends if necessary. And that's everything that came in the kit. So as we fit this on, you can see the hose has two different formed fittings here. And if you look on the bike, you can see that the shallow angle bend in this case is here. And the steep 90 degree bend is the one that goes down underneath the head unit here. In order, the, the reason for this little adjuster here, the blocks and the, and the pipe or the blocks and the dowel, is you can see how this head, if we put this kind of in the position where it's going to sit on the bike, this head is now twisted, oh, about 90 degrees out of position where it actually needs to be. It needs to be twisted over, and the opening here needs to be pointed straight down so as not to have to wrench on the on the hose. And that is what the manufacturer, Spiegler, provided this for so that you can go ahead and put this into a vise, these units into the vise, and you can twist this into position so you can get the head of the hose or the fitting on the hose in the right orientation. And we'll do that here in a with second. With the packaging well. that came with the hose, here's the blocks that were supplied for orienting the, the head of the hose here in the proper direction. And there's a diagram here in the in the uh, in the paperwork with the with the hose that explain how this works, we've kind of before I took the other hose off of the bike, 
I went ahead and kind of held this one up to the, uh, the currently installed hose. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the fittings here across the crimped part of the hose. Okay. We've determined by, by holding up this new hose fitting to the existing unit or the existing hose on the bike, I think that we need to twist the head side of the hose or the upper portion. The manufacturer has a nice little indicator trying to explain to you which side of the bike or the brake system this hose is supposed to be plugged into. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to take, we've got it in the vise now with the adapters they have and it's over the crimp, not over the actual head unit but the crimp. This is what the tube's for, or the little dowel, and we're able to go ahead and we're able to twist the hose that 90 degrees that I think that we need to go. And here I'm, I'm eyeballing it. And I'm going to go back to the bike and I'm going to make sure that I'm happy with where Probably it sits mentioned now. That we've got the bike up on the center stand so it's nice and stable while we're working on it here and so that everything is, is reasonably solid in, in where it sits. I've got the, the new hose aligned, oriented next to the old hose here. And you can see that now with the, uh, the lower fitting in line with how it's going to be oriented. We can now see that the upper fitting is now parallel and in the same orientation of the original fitting. So we should be able to go ahead and uh, the twist that we, or the, uh, the adjustment that we made on the, on the upper fitting here uh, looks to be in the a good spot now. T40 adapter here in my socket or my, my wrench and I'm going to loosen up this fitting here. There we go. That one started. And on this one, I may need, I may need to get an extension here. down here to catch up any grips that might occur. Okay, here we have the original brake line, and we have the longer, newer brake line, and you can see the difference in length here. We've got a couple inches in different or in length difference. You can also see that we pretty closely have the orientation now of the upper fitting to coincide so it aligns on the bike without a lot of twisting. You see those are almost turned Here's the same Here's a Spiegler. Now you definitely want to reinstall new, or not reinstall, but install new crush washers if you remove a brake line here. These were provided with the hose assembly that we have. The way that they go on, you're going to want to make sure that all the previous crush washers are removed. One goes on the screw fitting. It goes through the hose fitting and then you have one more so it appears the manufacturer or Spiegler sent us an extra one they were being generous so we have a spare in case we drop one or lose one or what have you okay so once we have the crush washers in place we can go ahead and get the hose situated in place here. Let's go over that. There we 
go. If you look on this side, you can see here on the uh, forward side of the bike, the fitting for the brake hose here has a little notch that the line nestles into. Helps with orientation here, helps to keep it in place. So just make sure that you got the brake line orientation nice right slot. here. We want to go in underneath the 90 degree barb to get the screw started. Two crush rushers, one either side. And now we get to try to get this going in here. I'm going to go ahead and use the adapter here. Alright, so here we have the new hose. It's not torqued in yet, but you can see where we've got a lot more slack with it getting down and reaching the fittings than we had previously. Previously it was tied up against the handlebar and against the triple tree here. So this is looking good. We want to just make sure that we got everything in line. Hose isn't really twisted up. That's why we, that's why we adjusted the fitting. We've got it in between the notches here and it's in a nice solid spot down here on the bottom. Okay, we're looking at the manual here to make sure we're going to get these things torqued down right. According to the uh, service manual here, we want the banjo holes or the brake hose banjo bolts torqued to 24 newton meters. So we're going to go ahead and get those snugged down. All right, so we've got our torque wrench set here. We're going to go ahead. We're going to get the banjo bolts here tightened down. Or the handlebar. Okay, we had a little bit of trouble getting the torque wrench back in, back uh, where the banjo, the lower banjo bolt was. So we ended up taking off the headlight. Two bolts, one on this side, one on the other side, and we just swung it out of the way. Now I have access with my extension. There's the banjo bolt right there, and I can get at it with my Torx wrench and get that properly snugged up. millimeter wrench here to open the master cylinder bleed screw here. We're going to pump the, uh, the brake handle a few times. I'm going to open this up. And we've got it uh, hooked into a bottle here that's kind of nestled into under the front cowling. There we go, a little bit better pressure. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back down here to the bleeder screw, which is this. Okay. That thing's going to be in the way. All right, so now that we have our brake fluid hose, or we have our hose, we filled up the reservoir with brake fluid, um, fresh brake fluid, DOT4 brake fluid. We've got our our siphoning hose here or our draining hose and we've got it down into the old brake fluid which is good. 
What we're going to do is we're going to depress the brake handle three or four times. And it's going to, if you look at the brake reservoir, you can see it's kind of bubbling there a little bit. We don't have to do it violently, but we're forcing brake fluid down into the line. And we're going to press and squeeze and hold the handle in now. And we're going to start forcing the, handle. the fluid down the line. Now don't un I'm not going to let loose of the handle up there. We're going to leave that in. You can see it's starting to force the fluid through the line. And what we're doing is we're our goal is to get rid of all the bubbles. Okay. So now that we've released that, we're going to now lock this back down and close it. And we're going to go squeeze the handle again three or four more times, just nice and steady like. And we're going to make sure that the reservoir never becomes empty. Because if it becomes empty, it can allow more air to get in the line. And hopefully, as we progress here, it will become more and more stiff to pull the brake handle. Okay, so as we pull it one more time here, that's about three or four times or more, we're going to hold in the brake handle again. And we're going to leave it held in, and we're going to bleed the screw again. So open up the bleed screw. Should force some more brake fluid out. We see a couple more bubbles. Bubble, bubble, bubble. And we're getting all the air out of the line. Okay. That's done. So we close back off the line. And we're going to make sure that the reservoir is full again. And we're going to squeeze the brake handle again. And we're going to continue doing this. So squeeze it three or four times, and on the fourth time we're going to hold in the handle again and bleed the screw.